forget this church app thing, but I actually remembered. And, and thanks to Shane's helpful sticky notes here, actually. So <laughs> it's very helpful. It's very easy to download. And uh, Shane says we'll stop talking about it when, uh, when everybody in Silva downloads it. So uh, just any app store, uh, Refuge Church of NC, and uh, that, uh, that'll be really easy to download. It's free. Uh, so if you don't have it. Get it, keep up with us. We don't track you. We just send you things that let you know church is going on and what's going on at church. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, I told you Shane is uh, out of town, so I'm very thrilled to be able to be here giving a message and, and to have him have a, a real break. I, I think it's real easy to overlook the, uh, the fact that he's here week in and week out every single day and uh, with, with no real backup. So I'm, I'm really uh, grateful to uh, be able to, to help in that way. Uh, so uh, I've titled my sermon tonight, Life After Birth. And uh, that might sound a little confusing because uh, it, my my sermon titles have been tricky lately. They kind of sound like something I'm not actually preaching on. Uh, so, but it's it's not life after new birth for the people who thought that initially. That's what I figured everybody would go to. But uh, we're going to talk about something that I've never actually heard preached on. And uh, most of my sermons uh, kind of just, I'll get them while I'm in here uh, watching Shane preach and uh, kind of build on him from there. Uh, and this one has uh, started out like that and then just kind of been added on to and added on to uh, with interactions that I've had with, uh, you know, Rob and Ian at the church and uh, just a lot of people and, and other people that I know uh, in the community. Uh, it's just something that I don't think gets enough attention because it's a real big issue. And this, so life after birth, we're talking about life after children, after you have children and what that does to you and your relationship and all the struggle that that really is. You know, we live in uh, a, a kind of church culture generally, and even at the best churches, you can have a tendency to become kind of a uh, your church self, or you have a, a person that you are when you show up to church. And so when people ask you how you're doing, you say, you know, oh, I'm, I'm fine, even though like on the inside you're dying. And, you know, it just really, you got a lot going on. And we don't want to have this church be that place. We want uh, for for the, the people here to feel, to have genuine enough connections and uh, for the sermons here to to be touching real topics in life. And that's one of my favorite things about uh, this church is that you will hear messages that are not necessarily comfortable and address the uncomfortable truths in life. And, and it's, it's something that uh, I think is just practical. So we want uh, this to be a place where we can be transparent, we can find friends and uh, enjoy genuine fellowship. The, the Bible says that uh, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And that's what we want to come here and uh, be able to do. So, uh, and if you don't have kids yet, or you've already had kids a long time ago, or you're never going to have kids, don't check out on me because this is definitely going to apply to everybody because you at least know somebody who's going to have kids. You're going to have kids one day, or, you know, maybe you're, you know, we got a lot of people in the church that have had babies recently. Uh, or are about to, and that seems to be uh, the case as long as we've been a part of this church. So, um, you know, this is a, a subject that affects us all, whether we realize it or not. Uh, and so uh, just out of curiosity, I, I know a lot of you, how many of you in here uh, have kids? Yeah. So I expect a, a, a really easy amen out of this one. They're hard, right? <laughs> It's just hard sometimes, right? It's so easy to be like, oh, everything's great. And it's, you know, it's, they're wonderful. And it, yeah, and it as it's just presents so much challenge in, in life. And, and which is kind of almost ironic because it's one of God's greatest blessings. And everybody will say that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they are very difficult. Sometimes you want to choke them. You know, they, they will push you to your limit. And they just, they know how to press all your buttons. They're around you all the time. You know, they just, 
you get maxed out. And especially, I know uh, my wife spends just about all her time uh, around our two children, uh, one of which is only three months old and uh, the other is three years old. Uh, and so it can be just overwhelming. And uh, so, you know, this, this message, as, as it has been added on to, has turned into something that I could do. I feel like I could do a whole sermon series on. Uh, so I'm going to do my level best to condense that and stay on one uh, topic and not uh, uh, branch off and do the whole sermon series here tonight because I don't want to keep you here until 12. So uh, forgive me if I run long, but uh, this is uh, just such a, a, a wide-reaching topic. It's something that has so many components to it. And as I was thinking about it today, uh, I kind of was able to uh, break it down to, to three main things uh, or three main uh, components to this topic. And, you know, it's, it's really in, in as far as having your kids from, from the word go, it is three different components. It's the guy's point of view, the woman's point of view, and then the, the relational point of view, which is really just a combination of the two and how those two meet. And uh, so uh, I know for Samantha and I, uh, and, and I think this is probably more common than, uh, than both people being all for it when you have kids, when you find out you're going to have a kid, uh, you know, I was ready. I'm a few years older than Samantha, and, uh, you know, I came to a point uh, when I was about 26 years old, I was like, yeah, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm really ready, and I, I didn't try to push her or anything, but I was trying to hold it back, but I did bring it up. I said, you know, I'm, I'm ready when you are, and, you know, she kind of looked at me like I was crazy because <laughs> she was not, and uh, so I find that to be a, a pretty common thing that uh, is said is that one, one person is for it and the other person's like whoa, whoa, whoa we we got to be ready for kids whatever that means I, I like to tell people that that is a dream that you made up and does not exist in any form of reality there is no such thing as ready for kids uh you know there's always an excuse to prolong it and uh, the reality is that uh by god's design you have there's a time limit on it on choosing whether or not to do it and so it, it creates a lot of pressure in relationships before the the decision is even made or uh you know as in our case uh, with elisha it was not planned most people's uh first child is not planned and so it's this big like world shaking thing sometimes world shattering thing you know sometimes and, and gosh if you haven't been in a relationship with somebody at all before that it adds a whole nother uh level of stuff to it but um so it, it it's this really just all around world changing thing and it, it just affects everything you do throughout your day. I remember when she told me it was a really weird day. I don't think I'll ever forget it when she told me she was pregnant with Eli. Uh, you know, she was in tears when she was, I could tell something was up when she came up to me, you know, and uh, uh, it, it just uh, really wasn't in her mind. You know, we tend to plan out our lives you know, and have, a, especially when we're young, we have this idea of like where we're going, we're going to do this, this, and this, and this, and that's going to get us here with this. And, and we have that plan. And I, I think it's uh, pretty common for God to shake that plan up a little bit. Uh, and, and I think there's good reason behind that. I think it's because uh, he wants us trusting him, not our plans, not, not the creative things that we come up with for a path to success. Because uh, you know, our goal for a very long time while we were up here, Samantha uh, and I came up here in 2012. She had already lived up here for one year uh, going to Western. So uh, she stayed in the dorms uh, for two semesters at Western. Uh, I drove up here a lot, a lot. And uh, so did a lot of traveling. And in 2012, I was able to come up here with her. Uh, we rented a place and um, been up here ever since. But our whole goal was to eventually, once she got her undergrad uh, accomplished, we were going to go on to PA school, which is a physician's assistant. And uh, it's a two-year program that is uh, very challenging, we found out, uh, and uh, would have taken us to a whole different place because uh, Western doesn't offer it. 
We were going to move uh, probably, we were thinking, to uh, Elon, North Carolina, which is close to our family by quite a bit. And uh, so it's going to have some benefits, but, um, you know, it was just going to be crazy. It was going to be a really uh, rough transition. We knew it. We knew it was going to be work because school is work. Uh, uh, and we found out that we were pregnant with Eli, I, I think, very shortly before we went to uh, – starting in all that right she graduated uh she was pregnant with eli had a belly while she was walking across stage uh at, at western there and uh i think he was three months old when uh we went to elon to the open house and they explained to us all the uh stuff that was going to be involved in getting this degree and and man let me tell you it was intimidating <laughs> it was like uh you're not gonna their biggest problem she said i'll never forget that lady standing up there saying our biggest problem was is with retention because people can't handle the fact that they never see their families and they work what realistically winds up being 16 hours a day if you factor in what you should be studying if you want to succeed so uh you're in school for like eight to ten hours a day uh for the first year and you know a lot of studying a lot of credit hours in in that and so uh it was going to be very just crazy to say the least because we i was gonna have to be around eli uh full time and it would have been very hard and so that was uh you know throughout the whole pregnancy samantha had some fear and trepidation about uh the the concept of having uh, a kid at this stage and everything but that really just brought it all to a head uh and and made her face uh some a really challenging point in life where she had to kind of choose uh, because basically what was being said is you got to choose between your family and this degree and then once you get this degree you're planning on working you know 12 hour shifts at a, a rural hospital but we're also going to have some classes going on here so you got to be both places and uh and and so it was a really hard thing for her because so much of your identity is wrapped up in what you plan on doing and and uh so it just added to it and uh it was uh one of the most relieving things ever when she came and said, I, I really tried hard not to say anything about the fact that i did not want to leave here because uh it turned out we both fell in love with this area and uh you know we're involved in churches here and just it didn't want to to uproot everything that we had been able to set up here and be a part of and uh so when she came and said uh that she's got a different plan and she just uh, she wasn't ready it was so relieving on both of us and we hadn't really talked about it because i didn't want to pressure her and i guess she was concerned about how i might feel about it so uh you know all that to say there was just this tremendous amount of stress around such a major blessing and i know that this is incredibly common because i talk to people all the time and, you know, I, I was talking to uh, a friend of mine who's older. He's, uh, I guess he's like 35 uh, and just having a, his first child. And his wife is right, right there in the same age with him. And, uh, you know, so they've had years. I, I think they were together for like four or five years uh, without children. And so, man, you get, you get comfortable with the way life is you get comfortable with no responsibilities you get more set in your ways the older you get it's just a thing and uh you know he I, I spoke to him uh just a few weeks after uh his little girl came and he said you know what i really wish i had heard that nobody has ever told me is you know they say yeah you're not gonna sleep and you know, there's going to be a lot of stress involved, and it's really hard work and stuff like that. But they don't ever tell you how much stress it causes on your relationship. And it, it does. It really, I mean, if you think of all the variables that are that are in this equation, it's, it's uh, you know, a lack of sleep. Uh, you're, you're not having sex with one another for at least six weeks after, right? That, that You're just stressed, both of you, after that. Mostly the guys, you know, are, are really stressed. There's, uh, you know, all kinds of new things. I was talking with Robin. Uh, about the uh, the struggle to go from viewing your wife as like just the your your girlfriend or you know it's more of a girlfriend thing even if you're married 
uh, and you guys party, and then all of a sudden, you know, she's nourishment for a whole nother life, and it's a whole – some guys have a really hard time getting over that. And, you know, it's, it's something that uh, – I'm probably going to say this a lot tonight, but uh, if you've experienced this or you are experiencing this, you're, you're not alone. Like, it, it's, it's common. And in these situations, it's so easy to get uh, in a, a place of despair about your relationship and, like, God, I don't understand why this wonderful blessing is being so uh, kind of muddled with all this hardship. And uh, it, it creates all kinds of uh, questions in you where you're wondering – why this is and uh, how to overcome this. And that's kind of what I want to focus on tonight is uh, twofold. I want to focus on the fact that you are not alone in this and that there is a, a help. There's a way out of all this trial that we go through as parents. And, uh, and relationally, it takes um, – work on a lot of levels but you have to be grounded in something other than yourself uh it, it's kind of easier to live life as a couple uh and and focus on yourself a little more once you take and add children to that equation you really you're, you're starting to share a lot more workload and uh it becomes uh it, it kind of can really exacerbate things that were already there in your relationship it can already just it can really flare those up and say, like, you know, man, if you thought you were arguing about dishes before, gosh, you know, or something, whatever. It's it's going to be on. Like when you add, you know, an hour of sleep and you're working and she's working and all this, it's just – it's nonsense. You know, it's, it's constant, and you get so short, and it's so easy to – uh, lose focus on, uh, you know, for, for the guys and for me, I know it's like, you know, you, you got to constantly stay focused on love your wife as Christ loved the church. You have to be doing this for, uh, for somebody outside of yourself. You have to be doing this as responsible to God and, and you have to equip yourself for what is genuinely, uh, uh, spiritual warfare. Uh, this is something that, uh, we all go through in a lot of different ways, but this is one of the most like uh, heart-hitting subjects. It really is because it's in your relationship. You get so trusting with each other, and, man, nobody knows how to hurt you like the person that's closest to you. And and when you get tired and you get angry and it's all hitting the fan at once, it's so easy to beat each other up. And you you find people a lot. I mean, it's amazing the uh, the amount of people that, uh, wind up just at each other's throats through such a wonderful thing. And uh, another component to this is that uh, there is a thing called uh, postpartum depression that a lot of women, turns out, that I never heard of. I never heard that phrase until oh, a while after Eli was born. and And it was something that, you know, for, for women, guys, I mean, gosh, this whole experience is like I, I never felt uh, the word that oh, I always want to say is more helpless, but that's not right. I never felt a, such a lack of helpfulness uh, for her because throughout the whole pregnancy, you know, uh, Samantha's your, – your, your body's going through all these changes as a woman, and you're doing all the work as a woman, I feel like. You know, I, I, I was just kind of a spectator. I'm like, pat you on the back. I'm like, good, good job, honey. You know, like I, just, I can't really do anything but rub your feet every now and again. It just feels like I'm falling short here. Uh, and then, you know, it's not just for the nine months of carrying your child. You, you got, you know, at least six months of that child being very dependent on the mother to, you know, small stomach equals a lot of eating. And, uh, you know, a lot less sleep. So it, it just felt like so much was on her plate and that there was, uh, from my standpoint, it felt like, you know, man, I just don't feel like, aside from praying, I can do anything. And uh, to some extent, that was true. Uh, you, you have to uh, just have a lot of patience in this. And, and that is something that... Uh, I don't find as naturally in myself, and I think that uh, most people could agree with that, that you do not just abound in patience of yourself. 
Uh, it's not a natural thing. That is something that comes from Christ at work in us and the word of God at work in us. That patience, that long suffering that we're called to, and it gives us a, a goal and a drive towards something. If we can stay in those moments focused on the word, if we can throughout our lives, but especially in these moments, uh, have that, uh, that word in our heart and, and allow it to flow. It, it cannot flow out of you unless you put it in. And so it is vitally important and it's so easy to miss. It's so easy when you're tired uh, and, you know, I've watched the, the kids now are with, we have two now that's been recent. Uh, and I've watched them a few t days and, uh, it is so easy to like wake up and immediately start doing kids stuff and not be able to just sit down and read or, you know, sit down and take time to spend time on your relationship with God. It's, it's, it's very easy to get caught up in the hectic, uh, motions when you have kids because they're very needy and and everything you have depends on them and um it, it's just overwhelming and it's very easy to neglect the the spirit in those situations and it's vital that we don't fall for that trap that we don't uh just get so overwhelmed in that situation that uh we just forget god altogether or forget to to feed ourselves spiritually and uh so, you know, uh, this message has, uh, as I said, just grown and grown. And uh, Samantha and I have been talking about it a lot. And uh, I appreciate her uh, ability to, uh, you know, sit back there and, and let us reveal so much of our relationship and all the struggles that, uh, that we've gone through uh, with this, um, especially when it comes to the uh, depression that hormone dump at the end of that whole nine months of already very hard there's some hormones mixed in there already but uh it's a very real medical thing that it's it's all dumped on the woman right there after she gives birth and especially within that first few weeks and uh it's it's something that most women experience that i never heard that nobody prepared us for that and um so it was kind of a, a, a big shock for both of us. I mean, I, I don't know that it was brought up to Samantha during the first pregnancy. And uh, it, it just kind of, you, you, you leave yourself wondering, like, why am I feeling like this? Why am I so stressed? And fr uh, if from her standpoint and from the guy's standpoint, it's like, man, I can't do anything without getting my head bit off, right? Like, it's just like, what am I doing wrong, right? And you know it's partially sleep, and you know there's a lot of variables in that, but it's so easy to lose sight of that when you're not – getting fed spiritually when you're really tired uh and you know it, it just it has been this big shock and so um that was something for us to learn about early on and uh i, I can say 100 percent that uh smith has been able to overcome that strictly by the word of god and, and strictly by his grace uh, i don't know of any other way or, or direction to point you for hope in that situation or for uh, a hope to get control of that because it is so very powerful. It's, it's something that as men, we really don't have to deal with. Um, you know, we have testosterone like crazy when we're like 18, maybe 16 through 20. Right. And we're, and it's pretty simple for us too. We can just go punch stuff and feel better, uh, you know, or get in fights with friends and feel better. It's a lot easier for guys emotionally, generally speaking in life. Uh, and, and women are such emotional beings and that's a great thing because it's the, the heart of compassion for the children. It's, it's, uh, it's so necessary for their role that they play, but it's also very difficult for men to understand that. Or, you know, it, it, we gotta get over ourselves and submit to the word of God and submit to loving our wives as Christ loved the church, which is like this on the cross, self-sacrificially. And uh, so it's incredibly important that we keep that in mind uh, as guys and as women. Again, the number one thing 
that I can say to you if you're dealing with that or if you know somebody who's dealing with that is you're not alone and and you're not crazy you know that you the the devil is throwing everything he can because the devil hates families the devil hates that construct it's it's children are a gift of god the marriage is of, born of god and uh it, it is something that uh i think we can all very easily say is under attack generally speaking uh and so uh the devil just pounces on this opportunity to throw every crazy thought in your head imaginable uh you know, a few weeks ago, Samantha and I uh, saw something, I think it came across Facebook newsfeed or something, um, where a woman in Asheville uh, was arrested because uh, she threw her child down a, a bank. She just chucked the child and left. And a guy raking leaves in his yard found the child. It was fine. But, uh, you know, it's so easy to, like, read something like that. If you've never been a part of it, if you've never heard any of the stuff like postpartum depression that I'm talking about, if you've never heard any of that information on that, it's so easy to be like, man, she's crazy, you know, and just leave it at that and kind of walk away from it. But the reality is this is something that's being told to women every day of the week that are in that point in their life. I mean, that's – if you – Look up, um, you know, I did some reading on the uh, Mayo Clinic uh, website about this uh, postpartum depression, uh, and most women, it was staggering. The, the vast majority of women not only struggle with some form of postpartum depression or baby blues, uh, which is the same thing just over a shorter period of time, uh, but they almost all of them say they have suicidal thoughts or want to hurt their child. And it's this constant cycle of, you know, I'm not good enough mother or, I'm you know, and then you, you just get in your head and you're beating yourself to death. You know, you're, you, she just can't stand herself because, oh, my gosh, how could I think that? And uh, the, the, the reality is that uh, we're not responsible for every thought that comes to our head. We can't help that all the time. Now, we can be around the right things we can spend more time doing stuff like this being in church being in the word of god uh and it will help drastically reduce those negative thoughts but it's not going to stop them the devil's still going to throw the the flaming arrows at you every now and again and it's this this spiritual warfare that we talk about you know this has been uh over the years spiritual warfare has been conveyed to be a lot of things um uh, that I, I just don't think it is uh you know, people want to, like, cast down strongholds and stuff that are physical, right? They want to do, like, physical spiritual warfare. But I, I don't see any evidence in, in the Scripture that that is the, the reality that, that Paul was discussing in that. It's, it is uh, really a matter of winning the battle in your mind because that's where it starts. That's where the devil throws the flaming arrows and uh, – hopes that one of them stick and a lot of them do if you're not grounded enough if you have nothing to fight it with then you can find yourself just inundated with with negative thoughts and emotions that will uh eventually play out into your actions if if unchecked so uh it's vitally important that we understand what these people are going through as a church um even, like I said, if you're not actively going through this, it's good to, like, if you have people you know, uh, especially younger uh, couples that are going through that period in life, it is very important that you make a concerted effort to uh, be there for them and be a voice of comfort to them and uh, be available. And that comes from genuine relationships uh, primarily a church, uh, which is what the, the, I think church is mostly for, is for, for genuine fellowship. Like I said, iron sharpens iron. And uh, so if you feel all alone in it, like most women do, like you're the only one that's crazy enough to have the negative thought about suicide or, or whatever, panic, you know, I'm not a good mother, uh, things of that nature, 
then you can get just trapped inside your own head and it's it's a, a living nightmare and, and so it's important for us to really genuinely cultivate those relationships so that instead of coming here walking in the door and saying oh you know everybody comes up and says congratulations and you know pets the baby's head and you know is loving on them because everybody loves doing that to babies uh and you know it's so easy for that person to put the fake smile on and just you know pretend that everything's hunky dory and it's not really and so uh i want this to be a place of uh acceptance and and genuine uh fellowship that has actual real impact on people's lives and i think that by equipping uh our congregation with the word of God concerning these things and, the, and just simply the information itself, because it can be very easily overlooked. I know it was for us. It was something that completely blindsided us. Uh, and like I said, it was, it is strictly by the grace of God and, and his word that we are where we are today, that Samantha has been able to, in, in very remarkable fashion, take control of those negative emotions, those negative thoughts, and and come out of that better and stronger on the other side, and 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 moreover than that, being able to help others, and and having been there, because as we all know, it's a lot easier to talk to somebody about a struggle that you know they've gone through. It, it's a lot more uh, easy just to walk up to them and and you know confess that like that I am drowning here in, a, in all this emotion and negative thoughts and I need some help and and I, I you can't even begin to understand how much of a relief that could be for somebody and, and just in is vital so uh, I want to our, our scripture for today is Ephesians 6 uh, and and this talks about it's a very popular one I think most of you have probably heard uh, uh, talks about spiritual warfare and uh, talks about the ways in which the enemy comes at you uh, and helps identify components of our uh, salvation that we can use uh, to win that battle over our minds. So we're going to read through this whole scripture and then uh, we're going to come back through and, and just go over some, some basic points, kind of break it down a little bit. Uh, this is Ephesians six thirteen through 17. Uh, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So gives a, a summary of, of this, kind of gives a picture of, of a suit of armor. And, and I like to, I heard uh, one guy say that uh, you, you put this on and, and the devil can't see the difference between you and, and God. And I, I kind of like that that thought that you know you roll around looking like if you're really gird with all this uh in your spirit then you you roll around in that type of uh victory and that type of uh ability to overcome so pull up the next slide cemental therefore put on the full armor of god so that when the day of evil comes not if but when this like i said this applies to so many areas of our lives, but uh, you know, is is vital uh, if scripture uh, in reference to what we're talking about tonight, especially. But and this reminds me of uh, the parable Jesus said: uh, the the two people, uh, two houses. One guy built his house with no foundation, just built it on the sand. The storm came and knocked it down, and the other guy built the uh, house he dug down found rock built his house on that and the storm came and his house remained and something that was pointed out a long time ago to me uh, was that the storm came on both houses the righteous and the unrighteous and, and so 
we're guaranteed some struggle in this life. And why not? Jesus did. You know, we're called to, to suffer like he did, to, to struggle like he did. And Jesus was victorious, ultimately. So we are called to that kind of struggle. And so that just reminds me that, you know, it's, it's coming, and it's about how much you feed your spirit, how much you put into it now can really genuinely help determine the outcome of your circumstance when it when the storm comes when it can genuinely affect it and so you know some of you in here may be a long way from kids but it is never too early to start learning about this and you know it's in your back part pocket it's you know I, I pray that it's written on the tablet of your heart that when when the time comes uh, that you will have this word to to gird you and and help you endure in that time and and be uh an overcomer in that and and it's impossible to experience that overcoming uh kind of faith and not share it which is one of the greatest things about all of this so reading on you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand stand I messed that up when I wrote that, but stand. Everything, everything to do. Again, that goes back to that word that none of us really much care for, patience. It's not going to happen overnight. When you're in those situations, for us, it, this was not an overnight battle. The victory didn't come overnight. It came through a lot of hard times. It came, for us, I'd say, over the course of, almost a year I would say before uh, you know we were at a place where uh, where we could genuinely say that Samantha was happy about being a mother and, and, and just overcame that situation and it's been really cool to watch uh, this go around with uh, the the pregnancy with Sayla our daughter um, she's been able to enjoy it Whereas before, all that fear had her so wrapped up that she could not just relax and enjoy the great gift that this is. It was, uh, like I said, it's just a living prison, and, and it, it takes from you constantly. That fear creeps in, and it, it, it takes your ability to enjoy even the, one of the most enjoyable things in life. You know, the, the, your children are a great joy. They're, they're supposed to be a great joy to you. And uh, this can, can rob even that. So it's been wonderful uh, to see what uh, she looks like and, and experience her uh, being genuinely joyful about it the whole time. Of course, this pregnancy was a lot easier on her as well. The, the first one was like a, a constant barrage of morning sickness or something. Just it was... It was very hard the first time on her, and this this pregnancy, and uh, so far the daughter has been a lot easier than the son. They tell me it switches later in life. I don't, I was, I don't know about that. Uh, but <laughs> I'm mean, I'm still in denial. You gotta let me have that one. So uh, let's pull up that next slide, Sammy. Uh, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of what? Yeah, yeah, something that that samantha had none of at that time she couldn't attain it and and it was a struggle to stay in it myself right like it's it's something that affects you when you're when you know when you're in a relationship and you know that um your wife is struggling with something it, it's just so hard it was it was hard for me to focus and be the the guy god called me to be throughout the day uh, and I had the easier end of it, and it was still hard for me to uh, just to to be joyful or, or to be, uh, you know, supportive to other people or to be involved in ministry because it's just so overwhelming, so oppressive. And uh, I, I can genuinely say that without the gospel having been so much a part of of my life. Uh, and it hasn't always been that way, uh, but I, I decided uh, a long time ago 
uh, at this point, I guess. Uh, when I was 20 years old, uh, I decided that uh, I was done trying to live life like I thought was right. And uh, something that uh, I, I grew up in a really weird way. Um, that's uh, a story for another time. But uh, my uh, my dad would always tell me, you need to read your Bible. You need to read your Bible. You need to read your Bible. I, I can't even tell you how many times I've heard that from him. And for my whole life up until 20, I never did. I mean, I went to church while we were uh, – I, I'm from Oklahoma. I uh, lived there till I was about five years old. Uh, and uh, I remember going to church as a kid. I remember hearing stories, David and Goliath and all those cool things. And I always believed the word. I remember, um, you know, accepting Christ at a very young age. I think I was five. Uh, uh, I, I remember that circumstance. And so I was always convinced that I was a Christian, but never paid any attention to the word and lived my life how I thought was best and how I saw everybody else was having fun. So I went after that. And so uh, the, the, I got to a rock bottom place in my life, and uh, that same thing my dad had told me all those years came to mind. I, I'm positive, not by accident, uh, that I should read the word. And uh, it just became something that, uh, by the grace of God, I, I had as a regular practice. It became my uh, sole focus uh, to be who God called me to be and stop trying to uh, do life any other way than outside of his plan because it doesn't work. Uh, and so I had a lot of years, uh, you know, at that time I had six years of that under my belt. And, and it really I, it changed the way that I handled all of this because I can tell you beyond any shadow of a doubt, uh, Smith and I would not be together today if it weren't for that, if it weren't for the word of God, because it's just too easy to quit. And that's what everybody wants to do. It's the first thing that the devil tells you is you should just, you know, grass is greener on the other side of the fence, quit, you know, start over. Somebody's got to be better than this, somebody. And, and that's just a lie. You're going to have struggles and arguments with everybody. Uh, you, you just pick the one. And some people live a lot of their life stumbling over that same thing. And uh, go through marriage after marriage expecting, you know, wondering what the problem with other people are is and uh, and not realizing that the problem is within themselves. And so uh, this is this is imperative to be able to overcome any situation in life, any struggle or trial in life. Uh, it, but especially these that hit so close to home that are relational, that cause so much uh, immediate pain and suffering with us. Uh, that you, you've got to have the gospel of peace to gird you and, and to, to have your back to strengthen you. That is the only place that you will uh, really obtain peace. Let next slide up, Sammy. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I'm so glad that that little last underline and italicized part is in the Bible because uh, had they just left it with the sword of the spirit uh, and not explain what that is. It's the only offensive part of your armor as a Christian. And it's the word of God that lives in you. It's the word of God that, that Jesus called the living water. And, and that rivers of living water will flow from within that person. They come to him. And, and so that's the that's the message I really want to deliver to you tonight, that you, if you can point people that are in this situation, if you're in this situation, uh, if you get around somebody that just even could be in this situation, uh, to have this on your mind, to be praying about it, and, and to be ready and willing to point people to that living water uh, so that they can be washed by the water of the word. It is vital and it is a, a lifeline to people who are struggling and, and hurting and just a, a wonderful blessing for us to not only have the ability to overcome this stuff, 
but to have the ability to help others out of it, even if we're not experiencing it ourselves. So if, uh, as this song plays, if, if you guys have, I, I believe that there's somebody in mind. If it's not you, uh, it's somebody you know, uh, I believe that there's somebody in your life that needs to hear that they're not alone in all this, that needs to hear that uh, God still loves them, that needs to hear that there is a, a peace to be found in the gospel. So, play that song. Thank you. 